Hey guys, it's John here for a quick 850 tutorial. So today what I want to do is basically look at a sort of spawning in effect. So imagine you've got a game and you want your mobile to look like it's spawning in or being created and do something kind of cool with it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this sphere to spawn in, then maybe I'll apply it to one of these. So to create my effect, I'm going to start with After Effects and I'm going to just create a new composition, which is going to be 256 by 256. Then your frames per second, uh, I'm going to go 25 and a duration of 2. So we want two layer solids, and one that's black and one that's white. And what we're going to do is we're just going to transition from black, so to, from nothing into white. And this is where our spawning effect is going to come from. Now, with After Effects, we've got a whole bunch of transition effects. We've got a bunch of presets that we could try. And for example, let me just let's throw one on, let's say, sand. Let's see what sand does. And we press play. Press play. That could be a spawning effect, so sort of like it comes in all granular. Or we could go layer. Oh, sorry, effects transitions and then do a card wipe or something. But for the sake of this test, let's do, should we do, let's just do that sand one actually. So it's going to fade in. Wait, is that the right way around? I think it wants to be the other way around. So we want it to start black because it's fading in and then go and I'm just going to spread these parts so this is just our transition complete so zero complete and are these a bit too big yeah let's just try setting them to five and five so it looks a bit more obvious and graphical um so there we go just a nice sort of simple effect that takes two seconds to spawn in, but you can sort of tweak and change this however you want. Once you've done so, I want to just, you know, create it, and I'm just going to use Sheeta to export this, but there's lots of different ways you can export this as a sprite sheet. Okay, so I've just exported that as my sprite sheet. Let's have a look. Oh, because of my time, should have probably been less than two seconds. Um, I can either re-export that, or we can just work around it let's just work, we'll just work around it we'll just work around it but i just go into my composition settings and just shorten it if i wanted to so now we need to start creating our material and let's just call this transition test let's go material and let's bring in our effect so how we're going to do this is by using masked so by creating We've got our texture here, and this texture is going to go into our past mask. But to make sure we can see something, I'm just going to give this a base color of sort of pink, why not? And just help three to create that, and I've just dragged this one in. Now I'm going to create a flipbook, and this flipbook is going to be what controls our UVs. So we need to actually open this up and count it out. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But then I don't think I want this row. Um, might might be seven, might be eight. Let's do a quick test. Should have just re-exported it, but it's fine. So you might go into the same problem. So, number of rows. What did I say we had? Eight? No, no, we had nine. Did we have nine? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we had nine. I said it'll either seven or eight or nine, and this was seven. Cool. So now we've got this effect. What we can simply do is, um, have, let's have a look at it. Let's just have a look at it. So at zero, let me put this, let me save it and put it on the ball. At zero, we want the whole th the ball to look invisible. And it does. And at 
essentially one we want it to be completely visible but it won't be because if you remember the last few frames on the sprite sheet were a bit absent so what we actually probably want to do is set this to about 0 0.8 okay so now with 0 0.8 when we save it the ball should reappear and it did so we can see by going controlling a parameter from 0 to 0 0.8 we're going to have this effect in fact let's let's give it a better test so we know what we're going to do is we're going to use time and just to see what it's going to look like we're going to use sign and that's going to curve it back and forth between but because we don't want it to go all the way to one i'm just going to drop a quick clamp on it and i'm going to say you can never go above 0 0.8 because that's our maximum value there and let's just take this and put it in here and i'm going to slow my sign down a bit so i can actually sort of see the effect so sign period over four Okay, now, once this saves and updates, this should start fading in and out. So you see how that's fading in and out based on the sprite sheet we've created? Awesome. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and say two-sided as well. Because we're sort of fading out, we want to see behind it too. Now in theory as well, what we can do, in fact, let's, let's just beautify this a little bit. And I'm just going to beautify this by giving it a good old fashioned glow, a glowy Fresnel that will come in and out. Right, so this is going to be our glow. Let's multiply that by a Fresnel. U into U, like so. U into U. And then this is going to be emissive. So let's just multiply it and give it, I don't know, 10. Plug U into our emissive core. And let's just set up the Fresnel a bit. What should we go to? For U. Um, and this is going to give it a big sort of fresnel -y glow. But I want the Fresnel, so as it's disappearing or fading in, I want it to sort of glow along with it. And I'm going to do that by just creating a loop. So point A will be loss of glow, point B will be no glow. So let's just give this some values. And let's say, again, we might want to mess with these values. Uh, yeah, might want to mess them, but let's see. And then we're just going to put the same time loop into here. Right now, this should be awesome. Ooh, look at that. Do you see how it's... So as it's disappearing, it's turning into a brighter glow. Now we could control the, these by having firing them at sort of different times so it turns to the glow colour first and then expands out or do you know we can sub sort of do it fine the moment though the glow's not disappearing fully so when the, when it's spawned in if we want this to change so let's just say I don't know minus three and give that a try So that shows the glow a lot. Again, it's not quite disappearing, but you can fine tweak that, or again, like lip it out or something. Um, what we could do, and what I might do at some point as well, is even take this whole thing and just create a quick material function out of it. But for the sake of test, I'm just going to Control C, copy, open up the chair material. Oh, and. Let's just drag you over here and bring in what we just created. Uh, 
and see how it works on the chair. Deselect it. And that's kind of cool. It's kind of glitchy, like a glitch out. And really, that's all just based on like this transition here. But if we were to go back into After Effects, let's just take Block Dissolve and remove that. And instead, let's put a transition. Uh, Venetian blinds and let's have that Venetian blinding out and you know what let's rotate it 90 degrees do you want more or less of those cool I'm just gonna quickly re-export this okay and I've just import this wipe and now for example let's go back into a basic sphere one click this and let's drag the horizontal wipe on there and see how that looks which is almost kind of cool let's try it on the chair as well That's pretty cool, right? Let's just, I'm just gonna slow this sign down so we can see it a bit more. So instead, let's just do it over eight. So we get the ball that's coming in over four seconds and then the chair that comes in more slowly. So it really depends on how you actually create your transition in After Effects. And let's just say, for example, really quick, because that's sort of the main effect that I wanted to show you. Um, so we know it's just about going between zero and one. So I'm just creating a new scalar parameter, help S, and create it, and let's just call this transition, what are these? We spell that transition. So transition is a zero. Oops, let's plug it in on this part as well down here. And save it. Open our level blueprint. And We've got a reference. Let's get a reference to the chair. Okay, sure. We've already got a thing here that says on, on spacebar pressed, get reference to chair. Set scalar parameter, which was called transition. Oh, we're going to need a quick timeline. A timeline sure and two quick values in here so a zero be zero at one be one go back so when spacebar is pressed play from start update that update that Let's give this a test. In theory, now when we press spacebar, the chair should appear. Oops, shoot. Sure. Right, so the chair was somewhere around here. Spacebar, oh, look at that. Ah, oh, say to one didn't I? needed to go to 0 0.8. But essentially, there you have it. Spacebar 
sends it from one, it should send it from zero to one, it should send it from zero to point eight, like the effect. But yeah, how to use transitions to spawn elements in. Hope you found that useful, guys. Thanks for watching.